Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're here this morning to launch a new road safety campaign, which is part of SAPOL's ongoing commitment to reduce trauma on South Australian roads. The campaign, Drink Drivers Are Full Of It, is also part of the government's $11 million commitment to road safety education in South Australia. Uh, this campaign uh, involved extensive research, so we were able to understand what motivates people who decide to make the decision to drink drive. Uh, during that, we also um, reached out to our own people in Saipol to find out what some of the excuses were that people used uh, when they were drink driving. And those things were, um, I can't afford to catch a cab, or I don't have a license, so what's the problem anyway? Or um, it wasn't far for me uh, to go home, so I just thought the short distance would be all right. Clearly, uh, our research and the research done as part of this campaign shows nothing more than the drivers who make the decision to drink drive are actually full of it. What we want to do is uh, show people that drink driving um, can cause trauma on South Australian roads, can cause uh, no end of uh, tragedy to families, friends and communities. And drink driving um, leads us to places like we're standing at today, and that's the Royal Adelaide Hospital. The, the campaign underscores what the consequences are of drink driving. South Australia Police, families, friends do not want to see you end up at the Royal Adelaide Hospital because that's where people who drink drive will end up. We know that last year there were 100 serious injuries caused as a result of drink driving and there were 15, oh sorry, there were 19 fatalities uh, where drink driving was uh, a contributing factor to their fatality. So we don't want you to end up here. We don't want your family to have to come and visit you at places like the Royal Adelaide Hospital. What I encourage people to do is to take responsibility for their actions on the road. Do not drink drive. Drink driving is a contributing factor for fatalities and serious injuries on our roads. Mates who are you might be drinking with, listen to them. If they try and stop you drink driving, then listen to them. Don't come up with a pathetic, weak excuse for not drink driving. You, you must listen to your people, your friends, your family. Uh, if you are making the decision to drink drive, think long and hard about what the consequences of that decision might be. We don't want to have any more fatalities and any more serious injuries on our roads uh, than, what, than what we've had over the years. Thank you, Jared. The South Australian Government continues to fund important road safety campaigns, including the one that's been announced by police today. We're very appreciative to police to the significant investment that's been made in new vigils, but a consistent message in terms of drink driving in South Australia. We know that 15%... Sorry, can we get you just to step up to the mics a little bit, please? Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. The South Australian Government remains absolutely committed to a road safety campaign which includes hard-hitting messaging in terms of drink driving. The messaging, of course, is that if you drink and drive, you're full of it. But this is a consistent series of messaging over time in relation to drink driving. As Inspector Bilgi has indicated, 15% of deaths on South Australian roads this year have been linked to drink driving. It's completely unacceptable. It is no longer socially acceptable, if it ever was, to engage in drink driving and our message is very, very clear. If you're planning to have a night out, you must plan a safe way home, and the consequences for you, if you drink drive, and for those around you, are very, very serious, and can result in you ending up in hospital or worse. The investment that has been made uh, in this investment is significant. There were 60,000 litres of imitation beer and wine pumped into a vehicle which had been sealed. Actors were required to be on set late at night in dead of winter, uh, wearing wet suits uh, in order to withstand the cold temperatures and the liquid inside the vehicle. It was shot in South Australia and we're particularly pleased with the outcomes of this ad campaign. I wonder if there are any questions. Just in regards to the ad campaign, why is it chosen to present it this way? 
think that this is very clear messaging in terms of the link between the use of alcohol and the consequences that you might face, including collision with vehicles or stationary objects and the serious nature and outcome, or the outcomes, obviously, of, of that behaviour. But, but important too is the decision to meet with you today um, to speak about this subject uh, close to the Royal Adelaide Hospital because we want to make plain the consequences of drink driving are very, very serious and the government takes a drink driving particularly serious, seriously. How much is that? Oh, it's, uh, I, won't, I won't speak to the exact breakdown, um, but obviously it's come out of our $11 million uh, road safety. Um, what other funding is being done to manage you know, those who might drink and drive? I think it's important to emphasise that all of the revenue that is being raised through, for example, road safety cameras is put into our community road safety fund and there are a whole range of programs across the state where you see that the funding rolling out. Um, those programs will continue but today of course uh, we're, we're announcing um, an investment in a package of investments which will play coming days on TV screens uh, and we're keen to continue to engage with South Australians in relation to this important messaging. There's also additional collateral behind me um, which will be displayed at other locations. Are the, uh, are the rates of drink driving year on year getting better or worse? Well, I'll probably turn to uh, Inspector Philkey in relation to those specific operational questions in terms of detections. But what I can say is that the South Australian government has absolutely no tolerance for drink driving. We treat it extremely seriously and we continue to use it. I might say to expect you to do it. Sure, we, um, I think it's fair to say there's been a lot of campaigns around drink driving done over the years and we have seen a steady decline in drink driving over the years. But over the last five years, we've detected somewhere in the vicinity of 23,000 people who have been drink driving. Now, in anyone's language, that's a lot of people who are still making the wrong decision and the irresponsible, irresponsible decision to drink drive. Last year alone, we detected uh, just under 5,600 people drink driving. Now, all of those people put other road users at risk. They put themselves at risk. So even though uh, we have seen a slight downward trend over the years in drink driving, and as the Minister has said, it's become more socially unacceptable to drink drive, the numbers are still way too high. People need to understand the carnage that drink driving can cause, and people need to make better decisions and be more responsible when they choose to drive. And as the Minister said, if they choose to, to go out um, uh, to a party or to a pub, um, then they need to make some plans as to how they will get home. And that is not getting behind the wheel of their car and driving home themselves. Is, is there a demographic uh, that uh, tends to drink drive more than others? I know a lot of younger people now don't drink and drive, they don't drink at all. Yeah. Is it a, uh, do you have an age group where there's some of the uh, highest rates of offending? Look, our, our um, research and our intelligence shows us that these numbers are more skewed towards male drivers and they're more skewed towards the, the demographic is kind of the, the 20 to 26 and then the 30 to 39 type age group. So yes, there are a, a lot of young people who are making decisions not to drink drive um, and we applaud them for that clearly. Um, but we know our, our intelligence still skews the numbers that I'm talking about back towards that young male driver. But this is not just about young male drivers. We, we know that their drink driving is across the spectrum of age groups. It's across the spectrum of genders. So even though that's what our intelligence is showing, this is a message um, for all people, for everybody who drives a vehicle, for everybody who might have a drink um, and has access to a vehicle, not to make the decision to drink drive. So yesterday, about 6 p.m. at Middleton, a, a driver was pulled over, ironically, on Hero Avenue and uh, blew uh, almost more than four times the legal limit, 0.253. What's, what's your reaction to that six o'clock, more than four times over the limit? Yeah, clearly a hero in, in nobody's language. Uh, that's what that is. That's, uh, it's astonishing. It's, 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 it's disgraceful um, uh, road user behaviour. 0.25 is a significantly high reading and we will see high readings like that. Now that to me just says that's a person who 
he's absolutely full of it. Uh, they're making excuses for, for getting in a car and driving home at that level of alcohol content. Um, that's just a really, really bad decision. And it's a decision that they are going to have to live with the consequences for now because they will appear in court, they will lose their licence, they will have their car impounded. Um, it will change their life. Um, but, more, but what could have happened is something a lot more tragically and that person did get further down the road or was involved in a collision and innocent people die. So it's a disgraceful disgraceful um, act on that person's part. Um, unfortunately, we do see those type of higher readings uh, more often than we want to. Um, so this campaign is still trying to drive the message home to people um, about how unacceptable drink driving actually is. So no beer or wine was uh, destroyed in the making of these ads? No, no beer or wine was destroyed in the making of these ads, you'd be pleased to know. No excise? <laughs> no. So we're talking about road safety. Um, mobile phone cameras have been switched on. What have we been seeing? Are people needing the warnings? Has there been a reduction or are people still maintaining the same levels of being on that Look, I don't have any mobile phone detection camera figures with me today. Um, I think I said at a previous uh, media conference that we will release some figures um, about a week after the cameras have been been operating. Um, it takes some time for those fines to flow through the system um, by the time your back office processes those fines. So we will have some data to you, I would think, uh, quite soon. But right now, I, I don't have that, that information with me. But as soon as we do, we'll let you know. Is there anything else with the uh, Palestinian uh, outbreak at the moment, uh, gearing up for protests? Is there anything you can say about how prepared SAFAR will be? Uh, look, look, protests have been going on um, in Adelaide now for some time. Police are responding with the right amount of resources and, and as appropriate. Uh, police will, will always um, make sure that we're um, maintaining uh, a safe flow of traffic for people and that we're maintaining community safety around these protests. So um, if I can just say one more thing, we are actually coming up to a long weekend uh, this weekend as well. Um, that means there's more more traffic on the road. There are people that are travelling um, into regional areas and maybe even interstate. Um, you know, we really want people this weekend to have a, have a great weekend, get to their destination safely and, and get home safely and not drink driving uh, during this long weekend is, is one of those messages. There will be uh, police um, out and about all over the state this weekend, both regionally and in the metropolitan area. So expect to see police, and if you are doing the wrong thing on the road, including drink driving, um, expect that you'll be caught and you'll be spoken to. So we want people to have a safe uh, and happy long weekend, and we look forward to a fatality-free long weekend. Should people expect increased breath stations on the yeah, you, you will see an increase in police activity um, over the weekend. Um, that's, uh, we do um, ramp it up a little bit on the long weekend due to um, the amount of traffic and the amount of uh, uh, travel that does get done. But um, we've got police out all the time anyway. But you'll expect to see police on the road this weekend. Thanks, everyone. Okay, guys.